So I'm excited to welcome back Teresa Chung to the program today. She is a best-selling author, an expert in the fields of dreams, spirituality, intuition, and the science of consciousness. But she is also the author of the new book, Empower Your Inner Psychic, as well as a number of other books. We will put links to those below. But I'm so excited to welcome back Teresa Chung to the program today. Teresa, how are you doing? Well, I'm, if you're excited, I'm super excited because actually it's a real honor for me to be with you here, Timothy, not just because you are in my <laughs> latest title, Empower Your Inner Psychic, but also since last time I was on, I've had so many loving messages from people who follow you, and I could not agree more. You are a visionary, a brilliant filmmaker, and your channel is just so pioneering and giving a voice to people like myself and other people in this area. So thank you, thank you, thank you, because your interviews, I've never had this before, I get interviewed a lot. It's almost like watching a movie and you make it entertaining. And in, in what I'm doing, a lot of it can be quite tedious sometimes and po-faced and too much jargon, but you, you make it like a movie. So thank you, I feel like I'm starring in a movie when I'm in your interview, so thank you. <laughs> I just had to say that. I just wanted to say big thank you to everything you do, and please keep doing it. Your channel is awesome. Oh, thank you so much. That is so, so kind of you to say, and it, it means the world. So thank you so much. I really, really appreciate it for your, your kind words, Teresa. So I, I do want to ask you, you're obviously an expert in dreams and mm -hmm. intuition, psychic ability, how to increase, how to tap into our, our intuition to receive messages that are divine or that have mm -hmm. real meaning. So how to do that. But before I get to that, for people that might not even be familiar, how does this even happen that you can dream about something and then it happens in real life? Well, it's the infinite mystery of being a human being. And I think it's blissful that it happens because it, it just shows us so much within us that we have yet to understand and we are far more mysterious beings than we can realize. It's not something to fear. There's a lot of fear associated with alleged psychic abilities. But we should remove that fear and get excited instead because it is so exciting. And I try to bring that into my latest book where I explore this, the science of psychic abilities and how we all have it. We're just frightened of it. Because in my mind, psychic abilities and self-belief self-love go hand in hand. You can't have one without the other. Intuition, being intuitive, being psychic is very, not much different from believing in yourself completely. When you can do that, your psychic eye opens up. The two go together. So a lot of it is doing the work, the journey of our lives, first of all, to understand ourselves better. You can do that through dreams, through meditation, through all these techniques. Then moving on to the next step, which is self-care and self-love. And from that, psychic abilities just flow naturally. Then, and a lot of people try to jump to the psychic bit first. But you need to do the first two steps, in my humble opinion. That's what the research suggests as well. And it's really fascinating. And on this podcast and on this channel, I meet and interview quite a few people that have had experiences about things, including dreaming about winning the lottery or certain things that where they believe in this and then it happens in real life. But how can someone increase their ability to tap into this sort of thing? These things can happen randomly to anyone at any time. But if you want to increase the likelihood of them happening, which is what you're saying, as I said, self-understanding that's where dream work comes in because dreams are your inner therapist and far cheaper than a real one they help you understand yourself better things like meditation also can help you understand that you are not your thoughts your feelings your actions you are separate from that you have choice so this is all about self-awareness moving on from that is of course the most important thing which is self-care and self-love without that you have nothing because if you don't like yourself or love yourself you're not going to attract into your life the good things that are going to make you feel fulfilled well they may happen to you but when they happen they're going to feel empty 
You know, there are plenty of highly successful people in the world who get what we think we all want and they're deeply unhappy. So what we all want, the holy grail of all this work, is to feel happy with the money we get, to feel fulfilled. If you want that, you've got to work on self-care and self-love. From this, psychic abilities just flower naturally because it's in our DNA. There is so much research I highlight in the book to show that we have this intuitive gene in us all, this sixth sense. But what we lack is belief in it. Research shows that belief in your own psychic abilities or belief in psychic abilities in general is the number one factor for increasing the likelihood of having them. Now, that's quite a revelation. You've got to believe it's possible for it to be possible. And that's what the book's trying to help you do is to believe something amazing can happen to you. Really, this is manifesting what we're talking about. It's about creating that energy within you that you truly believe this future version of yourself has everything, deserves everything, and it's going to happen. It's just a matter of time and the steps to get there. And that's similar to being to being psychic. You believe that you're psychic, that your dreams come true, that what you sense is correct. Start believing more in yourself, everyone listening, please. It's the best gift you can ever give to yourself. And one of the first steps is to look at what's going on inside your head every day. I try to compare um, our brains, our minds to our, our homes. We organize our home, don't we? We paint our walls and put furniture in and pictures that we love. Because we, when we come home at the end of the day, or if we work from home, we want the place to be pleasant, somewhere we feel This is me. This is authentic. It's exactly the same with the thoughts in your head. Start having thoughts that are pleasant and that make you feel good. You know, you're going to have a home in your head for the rest of your life. So put as much care into your the home in your your head as you do to your own living circumstances. That's what I'm trying to say. Choose wisely what you think you have choice over your thoughts. Understanding that really can ignite your psychic abilities in every way. And on another point, I I do sort of like have these thoughts as I'm speaking. I'm one of these people that I'm saying something and I'm thinking, oh, I want to say that. I do apologize. There's so many thoughts coming through. But what I want to stress here is that psychic abilities that your channel so brilliantly focuses on is the norm and not the exception. Almost everybody has had a coincidence, a dream coming true, an intuitive hunch, right? But what is missing then after that is belief in it, that it can happen more. We doubt and we fear and we second guess. And that is why psychic ability starts to diminish. Like anything in life, if you nurture it, tend to it, love it, believe in it, it will grow. So your your channel is helping people do that. Believe it's possible. If you believe something's possible, it's so much more likely to happen. And psychic abilities, just like that. But we do all have psychic abilities, sixth sense. We were born with it. And research shows that. What, is the, what does the research show? Research shows that we all have this innate ability. The scientific terms for it is intuition, creativity, empathy. But in my world... And I I believe that intuition, creativity and empathy are just other terms for being psychic. If you're empathetic, you can read minds. If you're creative, you have brainstorming ideas. If you're intuitive, you know the right steps forward. We all have this, but some people are born with more advanced intuition, creativity and empathy. These are called highly sensitives. A lot, I'm sure on your channel, you've interviewed a lot of highly sensitive individuals and research shows about one in five people have this highly sensitive gene. But what about the rest of us? You know, I don't think I fall in that highly sensitive. You know, I, I have my moments, as we all do, but I wouldn't say that I'm super empathetic, intuitive, creative. I'm sort of around the middle, which is where most of us are. And there's some people, of course, right at the end of the spectrum who really, you know, they're very practical, logical. And if you talk about all this, they say woo-woo and nonsense. But what I'm saying is so exciting. Research shows that if people right at the end of the spectrum, you know, who would not identify as being creative, intuitive, empathetic, are put on a simple course of meditation, daily meditation for at least three weeks, 
when their brains are studied, the centers in their brain that link to intuition, creativity and empathy start lighting up. And they actually, when they those areas of their brain start lighting up, what happens then is that psychic messages and sensing things is much more clear because they're logical people. So they're able to filter out what's relevant. The trouble with people who are very, very highly sensitive is they're constantly every day being bombarded with messages, psychic. They're picking up things from other people, from the environment. And for them, the challenge is to filter out what is relevant. People, the lower down the scale is opening up their psychic eye in the first place. But once they do open it up successfully through meditation, through the tools and techniques, some of which I share in the book, the messages come through much more clearly that they know this is a psychic message and it's not imagination or wishful thinking. So what I'm saying, wherever you are on the sensitivity spectrum, you can light up your psychic ability. You just have to have a different approach. People on the top end of the scale need to learn to set boundaries, not take on what isn't theirs. You know, if you're over, you know, the super helper syndrome, empathetic people, if you're very highly creative, too many ideas coming in. So you start lots of things and never finish them. And if you're super intuitive, you know, there's so many potential futures you see. You can't see clearly what the right one is. People down the lower end of the scale start meditating, start connecting with nature, start dream decoding. All these things will unlock the psychic gene within you. But when your messages come through, in a way, you have an advantage because you're much more rational about them. You will know when something is coming from a higher source or channeled and when something is nonsense, wishful thinking or, or anxiety. Because often distinguishing between what is an intuitive hunch and what is negative thinking or wishful thinking is very difficult um, for some people. And you need to learn how to do that. There are, again, tips I put in the book, you know, um, when something is clearly intuitive or precognitive, typically you want to do something. There's a calm sense of this is right for me. There's no conflicting voices in your head. Um, when something's anxiety, typically the voices will pull you down, will tell you you're being ridiculous and you will be trapped in indecision. You'll be rock hard place. I don't know what to do. But when it's precognitive, you will just say, this is what I'm going to do. It's a calm knowing that comes. And also precognitive senses are very um, nurturing, caring. They will raise you up. They won't pull you down. So if you're having a, what you think is a precognitive hunch and it's tearing you to pieces, it's not precognition. It's your, it's hello darkness, my old friend. It's your fear, it's anxiety, your ego crash, gate, gate crashing the party. Sorry, long answer again. <laughs> no, that's... that's... You're thinking, Timothy, where do I go from here? <laughs> I'm just trying to say so much because I, there's just so much to say. I have dedicated my life to researching this, read all the studies. I collaborate with scientists like the amazing Dean Radin you had on recently, people like that Julia Mossbridge that I've co-authored the Premonition Code with. I've spoken to authors, practitioners, I study dream decoding etc at a very advanced level religion cambridge university where i've got my degree and have written book after book in this area so i'm bringing all of that into my latest latest book to make mm -hmm. it accessible this research that's out there and to show that it is very simple very everyday and it's very connected with your levels of self-belief and self-love and we will put links to your books below including your latest book empower your inner psychic to say i mentioned that because a lot of people say to me what if you're psychic why can't you win the lottery before i met timothy and i wish i'd known him before i wrote the premonition code with dr julia mossbridge who's the time lady she you know precognition neuroscientist expert before i met timothy i i would say well you know your psychic abilities are more concerned with your inner wealth you know and which is true they are and then I met Timothy got in touch and I thought, damn, I have a, you know, he had a precognitive dream. So I have now um, corrected that. And in Empower Your Inner Psychic, in the introduction, I mentioned it is possible, but don't count on it, you know, not all the time. 
but it is possible it can happen and here's this story check this amazing guy out and actually you told me a wonderful quote as well actually which i put on the last page of the book which is no one is you and that is your superpower you told me that 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 was your your mantra and it is again it's about self-belief you're yeah. summing up there what i'm saying about just loving yourself and thinking i'm utterly unique miracle yes yes yeah, I, I do. I have this quote on my phone, no one is you and that is your power because everyone is Yes, yes. Unique. And that's self-belief. You're summing it up. When you believe that and you think the magic is me because there's no one like me, no one can can be like me or or feel like me. And when you start loving that reality, that's when positive change starts to happen in your life. Um, and it can manifest in winning terrific amounts of money, but it may well manifest in an inner joy and an inner peace and an inner calm, which is far more valuable. And I'm sure, Timothy, you know that because you won vast amounts of money. Um, but I'm sure you, you, you know more than anyone that it's the inner wealth, the inner, inner feeling of contentment that is far more valuable. That's what's priceless in life. Yeah, wealth, it seems to, I mean, money obviously can matter in our lives, but wealth really comes from within, I I believe, yeah. with how you feel you, about you your see, life. Day after day, you see celebrities, wealthy people, successful people, got everything. You, we all think that we will make us happy. And day after day, we read how unhappy they are. If these things really could make us happy, then why aren't? they you know really happy <laughs> it's not it's it's that inner inner sense of i've got my own back i love my life i love who i am i'm authentic and that when my time comes to depart this earth i will leave with no regrets because i've been the best version of me that i can be and that's what being psychic is as well it's being the best version of yourself you owe it to yourself to be the best version of you that there is. What is the most powerful technique in, in your book or just that you know of that you recommend someone to follow to mm. enhance their psychic abilities? Well, there are so many. Um, all I'm getting so many clustering in my head now that I want to share. And, and everybody's different. So what works for one may not work for another but I've mentioned meditation it is um, a technique that is a superpower um, and it's very simple meditation really it is just observing yourself it's knowing that you have choice over your thoughts it's watching your thoughts rather than jumping in and immersing yourself in them and identifying with them it's knowing that I'm choosing to let this thought get to me um, that's what meditation really is it's getting into that watchful state when you can watch thoughts going through you so meditation of course but there are other techniques which are super helpful to give you a kick start dream decoding of course i'm going to say that my best-selling title um today although inner psychic i must say about that has done phenomenally well over here in the uk i feel truly humbled and blessed it jumped to number 15 on amazon here in the uk on release uh, you know i had interviews with the bbc and all sorts about it it really became a talking point, but my dream dictionary A to Z, which is currently in all Barnes and Noble stores as a hard copy at the moment, they've done their own uh, exclusive edition of it, um, which I again feel blessed about. So dream decoding is what most people know me for, um, which is basically um, remembering your dreams, writing them down, and then looking at the symbols and trying to understand the hidden meaning behind them. The problem with most people with their dreams is they think, well, they don't make sense. They're nonsense. They're random. Well, of course, they're nonsense and random because they talk to you in a different language, the language of your unconscious, your intuition, which is the language of the artist, the poet, the filmmaker, like you, Timothy. It's, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's speaking in the language of symbols, metaphors, and associations. It's looking beneath the surface for meaning that when, when there's a, a symbol in your dream, you look for the hidden meaning. For example, if you dream of a rainbow, it's a symbol of hope for most people. But go for your personal um, meaning behind it. So dream decoding is a really good way to unlock psychic thinking because psychic thinking is not the literal. It, it, it's, it's what 
lies beneath. And that's what you get to with yourself. You've got to start seeing yourself on the surface level and find out the depths. Now, when you go to those depths, sometimes you may not like what you see. A lot of us are frightened of our shadow, but it's from our shadow side, the part of us we feel uncomfortable with, that we have the most growth. And nightmares actually are a transformative gift that you need to actually really learn to love because when you have a nightmare it's like your dreaming mind saying you have got to do some personal growth now you've got to confront this you've got to understand it and you've got to open a dialogue with it so meditation dream decoding another one i'm trying to uh, i i think is really important spending time in nature with living things because we are energetic beings more time with life with living things with animals with nature uh, you know spending time with animals will almost certainly um, supercharge your your natural psychic abilities because animals are natural empaths um, nature as well not too much in man-made constructions because you need life around you another thing as well for the first 15 minutes of your day please don't switch on your phone I know that's hard if you're busy and you've got a family um, but stay away from your screen your phone those early morning moments the first 15 minutes are sacred because your brain is in a very plastic state then and you really set the tone for the rest of your day um and and also it's a very psychic time because you've just come from the land of the sleep land of unconscious and you're transitioning to the day if you check your phone the message you send to your inner psychic is i don't matter everybody else matters more than me um, and what other people's opinions are and what they want matters more than I do. That can come later in the day because we live in a universe where we are connected to other people. And of course, other people matter. But those uh, at least the first 15 minutes, stay still, stay contemplative, mull over your dream thoughts. Think about how you feel. Celebrate the new day. Be expansive. Don't minimize yourself in the morning. A lot of us huddle in the morning. Be expansive. Be open. That's a really good technique for opening your, your psychic awareness. Another one is listening to music. Study after study shows music is so powerful for developing your intuition, your creativity. And I'll tell you why. When you listen to music, what it's a whole brain experience. The part of your brain that is logical, which we need, as I say, the logical part of your brain is essential because it helps you know what's relevant. It is working to make sense of the notes. But the other part of your brain that is creative and intuitive, the psychic part of your brain, is just dreaming. And what happens is you get the both the logical and the creative part of your brain agreeing to differ, but doing what they do best. And that is how you ignite psychic ability. When you're not criticizing one part of you, the logical or the intuitive, and they're not fighting and disagreeing, they're just working alongside together in harmony. And listening to more music can really encourage you to do that because both parts of your brain, as I say, will be walking side by side, almost hand in hand. They disagree. They will never agree. But they're in harmony. And when you get that balance between intuition and logic, that's when you get precognitive hits, psychic hits. Another way to do that if music's not your thing is to look at more art um, or read poetry or video gaming I, I i mean i put that in the book video gaming is really powerful way to ignite your psychic abilities why it depends on the game i mean i, I love games like skyrim because you immerse yourself in an alternative reality and where symbolism rules and you're kind of practicing psychic speak you're giving your 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 psychic part of your brain loves it when you do fantasy um, not too much. As I say, that balance in life, you know, life can't all be fantasy and losing yourself in an alternate reality. You need to balance it with the practical. Again, it's if you go too much one way, Timothy, that's wrong as well. You know, you, just, you go away with the fairies, you, your head in the clouds. You can't have that. You've got to balance the two. But, you know, just lose yourself in a great novel, a great video game, a great fantasy TV series. I'm all for that. So those are kind of my, my key ones, but there are many more around that. Things that you do anyway, but now you know how powerful they are for potentially igniting your precognition, your psychic abilities. I hope that that mindset, that perspective will actually make you think of them as sacred things, things you're doing 
to enhance your psychic ability because it really isn't difficult to enhance your psychic ability I, it frustrates me really that there are all these difficult courses out there and it makes it look like it's really difficult it's not if it feels difficult you're doing it wrong it should feel effortless and natural just as effortless and natural as when you listen to a song that you love and it lifts you up. And I, I recently watched Stranger Things, you know, Kate Bush. I was actually, I come from the era, you know, I was in, you know, and she was her Wuthering Heights era. It was wonderful to see her renaissance, you know, and that song, Running Up That Hill, it's the, the, the directors, you know, like you are, Tim, they're visionary. They understand the power of music. That's the only thing that can help her escape the mind flare is music because it raises her vibration. It gets both parts of her brain working together to save her so music mm. can save your life just as dream decoding can just as meditation can <laughs> mm. yeah that's <laughs> that's wonderful i i do want to i know we don't have tons of time today but i do want to ask real quickly in the first part of this interview you mentioned the power of self-belief the power of yeah. um believing in in yourself and how that can really also help enhance your ability yes. to tap into this stuff. So why is self-belief so important? Self, but well, if you don't believe in something, you're not going to attract it into your life because we're all energetic beings and the universe responds to our inner beliefs. For example, if you're always what thinking about your issues and your problems in your life, that is what you're going to attract. It's, it's shifting your thinking to solutions. It, it's not toxic positivity that I'm talking about here. That's wrong as well, just in going into denial and just always putting a smiley face on. That is not what I'm talking about. That's not realistic. But it's just believing that you deserve the very best, that you are psychic, Believe that and you're far more likely to notice coincidences, to understand your dreams, to attract into your life like-minded people. If you don't believe in your own inner psychic, you really are, <laughs> you know, an uphill struggle. That's the belief. You've got to believe it's possible. And that's why in the book I lay out the signs to show it's there. But what isn't there is your belief in it. But you can work on that because remember, we have choice. Now, one of the reasons many of us lack belief in our own intuitive and creative and empathetic ability, i.e. your inner psychic, is because of our parenting, our upbringing, our schooling, what we were taught. Because we all try to people please as children because we have to for our survival. We have to attach to our carers, our parents, because without them, we will not survive or thrive. So a powerful drive within us all is in attachment to others. However, when you hit your late teenage years, you don't have to go for that attachment anymore. You can go for authenticity. And that's the biggest struggle. A lot of people, you know, they're so programmed to the attachment and people pleasing that they don't get their own self-belief. And that is truly growing up when you start realizing you don't have to choose people pleasing and attachment. You can choose authenticity, being true to yourself. You can discover who you are, what you think and what you believe and what you deserve. Now, if you were brought up in a family, I was very fortunate. I was brought up in a family of traveling spiritualists. So <laughs> you know, dream decoding was something that they, you know, I, I just just was you believe I believed in it because that's what I was taught. But a lot of people won't have been brought up in that they would have been brought up you know that's nonsense dreams are nonsense get real not all that you know and then at school it was confirmed because our education system is, is largely skewed towards the the technical the practical which has its place i i really would love to see a change in schools to much more emphasis on the power of dreams in our lives i'd love to see a date Timothy, when dream decoding is taught at schools and that people, you know, that there's a class on it and, 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 and listening to your gut instinct because your gut speaks through your body. That's another thing I meant to say is listen to your body. It is a psychic receptor. Research has proven that. It shows that your body picks up signals, but we repress it and we ignore it because that's what we're taught because of this longing for attachment and to people, please. But it's very liberating when you do realize you don't have to do that anymore. 
Why do we spend so much of our life trying to please other people? That, at the end of the day, isn't going to bring us fulfillment because we are reeds blown in the wind. We need to plant our own tree and be this majestic oak that stands there, regardless of what's going on around it. That's what we need to do. I, I love that. <laughs> well, let's let's all plant our own tree. That is that is beautiful. <laughs> well, <laughs> t- well, Teresa Chung. She's when you the op- plant, you grow, don't you? You set down roots and you grow. You know, you're not buried. You're growing. When you plant something, people think that, that lots of the fear. When you plant something, you think it's buried. But what's happening when you plant something is it's setting down roots and it's growing something and that, that, that will, will burst forth and be incredible. So, so have, have faith, believe in yourself, people, because then precognition comes naturally. That's beautiful. Well, Teresa Chung is the author of Empower Your Inner Psychic, as well as several other books, The Dream Dictionary, How to Catch a Dream, The Truth About Angels. We will put links to all of those below. Teresa, I know you have to get going here. Do you have, is there anything else you wanted to say today? Apart from thanking you again and everyone listening, I truly appreciate it and your openness to this because having an open mind and being willing to consider these concepts that are out there is pushing humanity forward because the more people do that, the more humanity, you know, pushes forward. And as I say, what is considered out there is simply the science of the future. It's just things we don't understand fully yet. I firmly believe that one day being intuitive, being precognitive will just be considered a part of what it is to be a human being. And, and everything that this channel is doing is, is losing the fear of it, and making it seem it's ev- it is every day. It's the norm. It's not the exception. We need to just break down um, the barriers of fear um, that we have and, and, uh, and actually just get excited. Replace the fear with excitement, which is what I said at the beginning. Don't be frightened of your own greatness. Don't be frightened to shine. That's why I'm sparkly, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Well, you, you are. Well, I'm grateful for your time and I'm grateful that you are shining. Um, Teresa Chung, thank you so much for your time and for returning. Your, your insights are very inspiring and uh, I, I really appreciate it. Thank you, Timothy. So that was my interview with Teresa Chung. If you like this video, go ahead and hit the like button. Let me know in the comments, what did you think of this interview? I love checking out your comments. There are new podcast interviews coming soon on this channel. Go ahead and hit the subscribe button and the bell icon to be notified when they come out. As always, thank you so much for watching and thank you for your support.